this is just a test to see if my sound is working lord give me words today give me words today help my words flow in jesus name amen hello y'all and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is your first time here my name is charity and this is episode four of the knit girl magic podcast Episode four. Let's get into it. Um, I think I just want to start these by catching up, you know, talking about what's been going on the past couple of weeks. So the last episode I recorded was, I think, right after Christmas time. Um, and I was on vacation and I had plenty of time to knit. So I got a lot of things done. Um, this is January. Lord, what is today? January 22nd and I am now back at work and trying to squeeze in any amount of knitting that I possibly can and I did manage to finish some things not because I had lots of time but because my kids got sick um, I tell you what since the pandemic um, I feel like we were in a bubble like when we were in the pandemic and our kids, you know, they just didn't really get sick. We didn't go anywhere. But now it's like every other month there is something. They catch something. So I have had plenty of time to get some knitting done because Aiden, who is my nine-year-old, and Aubrey, who is just, she just turned one, both got sick and I spent not this week, this past week, but the week before out of work for three days. So I was able to finish quite a lot of things. Um, so that was fun. It wasn't like COVID or anything like that. It just seemed like they had some pretty bad colds. And my husband and I have been trying to stay strong and fight off their germs. And I think we've managed to do that this time until the next round of germs come. So before we get into the knitting, go ahead and grab yourself a cup of something. I don't know why, but I get so thirsty during these podcast episodes, so I have bottled water. So I'll be taking a sip of that, but you grab what you like and some knitting and let's chat. So what am I wearing? Well, the only thing that I'm wearing that is knitted today is this hat. This hat may look a little bit familiar because this is a hat that I knitted for the first time for my aunt in one of my previous videos. This hat is called the Ruched Cloche Hat by Betty Jones. Y'all, that is a tongue twister. Ruched, and, and then I'm going to say it again just to embarrass myself some more. <laughs> the Ruched Cloche Hat by Betty Jones. That'll probably be the last time that I say that today. <laughs> but I knit one of these for my aunt and I loved it so much that I decided that I had to have one for myself. So that is what I am wearing today. And I will leave it on my head because this hair, when a hat is removed, is not what you want to see. Um, but I still really adore this pattern. This pattern can be found on Etsy. It can be found on Ravelry. It can be found on the webs, you know, wherever you choose to get your patterns. This pattern calls for you to use bulky weight yarn and size 10 and size 10 and a half needles. And that's exactly what I did. So the yarn that I use and that I'm really, really loving here lately is Malabrigo. And this yarn is Malabrigo Chunky, and the colorway is Rhodesian Ridgeback. I'll try to be very careful so you can see. This yarn is 100% Merino wool, and it is just lovely. It comes in skeins, uh, 100 gram skeins with 104 yards, and it's plenty of yards or plenty of yarn to make this hat. 
The thing that I really love about knitting this hat is that it does knit up super quickly. So it is a great pattern for me to use when I'm knitting in the morning when the students are coming in. I think I've said several times that um, part of my job as a teacher is to greet the students as they come in and I like to have something to do with my hands so I'll always have a pair of socks or a hat or something quick on the needles and that's what I did with this hat and I knit it very very quickly. Um, I also love the color. This color is just I don't know it I mean it's obviously like a burnt orange and it screams fall but I think it really works well you know for my skin tone so I really like that and then the this yarn is just super soft so I enjoyed it very very much. Um, to knit this hat you need size 10 needles and size 10 and a half needles. I used my Chow Goo Red Lace circular, circular needles this time. The last time that I knit this hat, I used uh, my Chow Goo Red Lace for the size 10 and a half needles, and then I used some wooden double point needles for the 10 needle. And I learned from that mistake. Um, so I think it's better to use, you know, long enough red lace or, you know, circular needles, whatever you have, because with the bulky weight of the yarn, um, double pointed needles just kind of make the yarn slide off a little bit. So this time I used the red lace needles for both um, sizes so that I would have plenty of room for that yarn to slide and this time I wasn't like panicked that I was going to lose some stitches the whole time and I think it worked out pretty well. Um, so this pattern is a very very easy knit. I think that I'll be knitting a whole lot more of these in the future. My sister actually said and she's not really interested interested in knitting at all but she mentioned the other day I want one of those hats so I'll probably be making one for her um, but the way that it is constructed is you start off with knitting a regular brim which actually falls like in the back of where my head is now you can't really see the regular brim and then you change your needle size throughout to get some like flat parts and then some ruched parts um, the thing that I might do differently when I knit this for myself is I think that I would knit um, another sequence of the ruching part of the pattern um, either one or two times more than what the pattern calls for because obviously I do have a lot of hair and I need more room you know up top so that it doesn't fit so tightly on my head. Um, I'll insert a picture of what it looked like from the designer. But I think that I need a few more rows of that sequence so that I'll have more fabric up here. I mean, it, it's cute when it's fitted to my head like this, but I think I might want more of a slouchy look so that you could really see, you know, the, the ruching and the texture that this pattern gives. Yeah, so... That is the hat. I'm not going to say the name of it again, but I definitely will put it in the, script, the description box down below. So I know that there is usually a sequence to these knitting podcast episodes, but for me, it's probably just going to be all over the place because if I don't say something like right when I'm thinking about it, I'm probably going to forget. <laughs> That being said, um, one of my whips, one of my works in progress is actually using this yarn and I didn't want to forget to say it because I did forget to bring it upstairs with me. It's in the car in my backpack because now that I have finished this hat, I need my morning uh, routine knitting hat or knitting pattern. And so what I've done is I've, um, well, what I'm going to do is I'm using the leftover yarn from this Malabrigo Chunky and I am knitting myself a headband you might call it or ear warmers you might call it um, because I need it. So I think that what I'm going to be doing um, this year, I know everyone's talking about their knitting plans. I just want to knit what I want to knit when I want to knit it but I also want to knit 
things that I need. So I need a hat for when I'm standing out in the afternoon um, in the cold in the car rider line. Another one of my duties. So in the afternoons, I stand out and I put kids in their car and there's all kinds of weather and all kinds of cold here in North Carolina. So on those really cold days, I obviously need a hat, but then sometimes, well, a lot of times, and towards the end of the week, my hair will be in a bun. And ain't no hat getting on this head with a bun. It's already big enough. Now imagine a big old bun on top. So that's why I've decided that <laughs> the next thing that I'm knitting for myself is ear warmers. Are ear warmers one of those? It's so hard being a teacher because you feel like you have to have perfect grammar and I just don't. Anyway, I'm knitting ear warmers for my ears so that I can wear them during really cold days. Um, I actually left that in my backpack so I don't have that to show, but you can imagine this same yarn um, just wrapped around my ears and I'll be sure to show it next time. I think I have about this much because it was kind of a busy week um, in the mornings this week and I couldn't knit a whole lot but that's what I'm working on and I will be happy to share that with you next time. Alright so back to some more finished objects. I have two more to share and I am very happy to share with you that I finished my Sophie shawl. Dun dun dun! This is such a great pattern that everybody and their mama has been knitting this winter and I jumped on the band wagon with the mamas and knit one for myself and I am in love with this shawl. So this shawl is by Petite Knit, the ever popular knitwear designer and she's so popular because she is brilliant. Um, I knit this with, let's see, Wonderland Yarns, um, and this is called Pigments. Now, this is not called Pigments of Imagination, but that's their base. The colorway is Rose Thicket, and that's the number. It's backwards for me, so <laughs> you can read it. Um, but this is their Mad Hatter base, and I chose to use a sport weight yarn instead of um, worsted weight that the pattern call for, called for. And this came in 100 gram skeins of 344 yards. And as I mentioned in the previous, previous episode, I used two skeins because with it being sport weight, I knew that um, my shawl would end up being smaller than what the pattern called for so I decided to weigh my yarn with my good old kitchen food scale and I made sure that I had 100 grams exactly in each skein and so I started at the bottom of the shawl obviously you start with a triangle and it's a paid for pattern so I'm trying to be really diligent about knitting, about not giving anything away and you increase, 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 increase. And so I increased all the way to the middle. I think the midpoint is right here. And then I used my next skein of yarn. And I mean, this thing just goes on forever and forever and forever. Um, and I think, let me look at the pattern. Okay, so I couldn't find the pattern on Ravelry. So I just went to my handy dandy paper version but I was looking for the length of the finished shawl um, with the worsted weight yarn from tip to tip it's supposed to measure 94 inches for the largest size and of course I went for the largest size before blocking I tell you what blocking is crazy um, and this is super wash merino wool I don't know if I said that but before blocking I wrote it down this measured about 73 inches long and after blocking it's 92 inches long so that just tells you about the magic of blocking and just how much it can change 
your knitting and that can be a good thing or that can be a bad thing in this case it was a good thing because now I'm able to get not just one wrap <laughs> and I know I'm looking crazy putting this over all this hair but I can get two wraps you know when it's really tight around my neck so the blocking process for this shawl was chef's kiss that's exactly what I wanted it to do um, but I am going to talk about a sweater that I'm knitting and um, the blocking process for that. I'm, I know that I'm going to have to be very, very careful because, anyway, superwash merino yarn can just do some things to your knitting. So that is this Sophie shawl. I think that's really all that I wanted to share about it. Um, it's just an all-around great pattern. If I needed another one right now, I'd go ahead and do it, but this is definitely serving its purpose. I just need to remember to have it with me when I'm at work so that on those really, really cold days, I have it there. Okay, so my last finished object for the day is a pair of socks. Yes, I finally finished my green pair of socks that I think I shared with you in the very first episode. It has taken way too many months for me to knit these socks. Um, these socks I knit held double, as you can see. Look at the fuzzy fuzziness or the halo. I think that's what people call it. Um, I knit this with two yarns held double. Um, one of them I do still have the ball band for. It was Drops Flora. And the colorway, it just says color number 15, but it's obviously green. Green is my favorite color. Um, so I held one strand of Drops Flora and one strand of Drops Kid Silk Mohair. And I don't have the ball band for that. But these socks match my very first sweater that I knit for myself because I had so much yarn left over. I have to be more careful about um, not being so paranoid about how much yarn that I'm going to need for a project. Like I just need to calculate how much yardage I'm going to need and go buy that instead of buying so much extra yarn. But in this case it worked out because I have a pair of matching socks. And now I think I have about seven or eight pair of socks that I can alternate between in the winter. I love hand knit socks, but for some reason, I don't know, I guess it's, you know, my sock mojo, as people would say it, I lost it <laughs> over the past few months and I really just didn't want to knit on these. Even for my morning duty time, like I would just find other things to knit on and not these. And I think it might be because of the size of the needle that I chose to use for these. So when you hold this fingering weight with mohair, that's supposed to be, that's supposed to make it, sorry, that scared me. <laughs> you know how the heat or the air conditioning can push your door? Whew, I didn't know what was coming in here. But um, so typically when you hold a fingering weight yarn and a mohair, that gives you a DK weight. So I... I knew, I knew that going in, but instead of using larger needles that you would use for D, DK, I still used my Chowgu 2.25 millimeter needles that I would use for fingering weight socks. And I think that may have been where I went wrong, and that's why I didn't want to continue knitting on these, because that created a very, very dense fabric, and my knitting just didn't flow like it normally would with um, my regular socks. And most of the socks that I knit, I use, um, and I have some right here. Superwash Merino, um, usually fingering weight. They're always fingering weight. Um, but I usually just use that one fingering weight. So held with the mohair, it makes for a very dense, very... Um, 
no, very dense. That's the word fabric. And that's why I think it took me so long because it just didn't feel good. It just didn't flow. But I finally did finish these um, when the kids were sick. It's one of those things that I did get finished. And I have never blocked socks before because I just I usually just throw them on my feet. But because this is such a dense fabric, I thought that I might want to try blocking them just to give them a little more drape. And it, I think that really helped. They're very beautiful. Very drapey and very, very soft. Ooh, I tell you, if you're not blocking your knit and crocheted items, you have to. Now, am I going to continue to block socks? No, but in this case, I think it just really helped them to drape a little more and not be so stiff. For these socks, I did not use a pattern. I cast it on 64 stitches, which is my normal sock recipe. As I said, I used 2.25 chow goo um, needles. I did magic loop for these and I knit three purled one to create a ribbed sock. So I did two by two rib for the cuff and then knit three purled one for the leg for the top of the foot and then I always do a regular heel flap and gusset and on the bottom I just knit regular but these oh I can't wait to wear these I love them so much they were just a pain to knit so I do think that my next pair of socks will be DK weight just because I'm not really wanting to knit them and it it might have just been you know the fabric that I that I created with this but because it's not I'm not really into them right now but I do love wearing them my next pair will be DK weight socks whenever I get the chance to do that so those are finished yay so those are all my finished objects and now I can talk to you about my current whips. So I spent, after finishing my last sweater, and I think it was the clove sweater, it was about three weeks and I didn't have a sweater on the needles and I haven't knit that many, but I'm, I'm just, it's what I wanna knit right now. It's all I wanna knit. And I was feeling a little bit anxious that I did not have a sweater on the needles. I, I have to have time to, you know, get to the yarn store and all that good stuff. So um, I just spent time looking on Ravelry at which one I wanted to knit next. And uh, there were two that I was choosing between. So the Dartmoor sweater and the Harlow sweater were just calling out to me, both by K. Dree. And they're both drop shoulder sweater designs. For some reason, I'm just really loving that. Even though there are a lot of ends to weave in <laughs> with drop shoulder designs, um, I just really like the look of those. So those are the two that I was choosing between, and I decided to go with the Harlow sweater. And thank you to my Instagram friends for taking the poll and helping me to choose that sweater. So... Here is what I have so far. Do, do, do. <laughs> Not very much, because as I said, it took me a while to get to the yarn store, but you can see that I have the back panel done, and now I'm working on the left shoulder. There's some shaping that I need to do, and then I'll do the right shoulder and connect the front panel and the back panel. Um, this is a really lovely pattern and the reason that I really wanted either the Dartmoor or this one is because of the lovely little detail that goes along the back. Um, on my last sweater mine looked a little untidy there and so I really loved how the shoulder and the back panel connect on this one that nice little ridge line. And that's why I picked it. Now the yarn for this that I'm using has caused me 
some stress. And knitting should never be stressful. So I'll talk about that more in just a moment. But the yarn that I'm using is Malabrigo Rios. And that is their worsted weight yarn. And the color is Grease, which is Spanish for gray, I do believe. Aiden could help me with that. He is in Spanish class at school. He's been in it for, this is his fourth year, and he's fluent. So I asked him, is Spanish? That means gray, right? And he told me, yeah. So <laughs> it's um, very, very pretty. This is 100% superwash merino wool, and it comes in 100 gram skeins that are 210 yards. And when I finally made it to the yarn store, I saw this yarn in the Malabrigo section, and I just, I couldn't leave it. I couldn't leave it there. Um, I know that the color is going to be washed out here on camera, but it definitely is gray with a very blue tint to it, like a dark blue tint. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but there was just something about it that I just, I couldn't walk away with it. Now, what I try to be very, very diligent about when I am looking for patterns to knit is I try to look at the yarn type that the designer suggests and I try my best to use that yarn type because I want a sweater that's going to measure and feel the way that the designer intended for it to measure and for it to feel. But this way, it's like, or this day, it's like I was escaping from the house. I was in the yarn store. I had been, you know, cooped up with the kids all week when they were sick. And I, like, all my logical thinking went out the window. And I got this yarn. And um, then when I got home, I panicked. Because I went back and I looked at the pattern. And the pattern calls for like a very wooly yarn. And I think um, it's actually a sport weight yarn that you're supposed to use and hold it double with mohair. And I've done that before, but I don't know. I just didn't want to use mohair this time. I wanted to use one strand. I wanted to keep the cost down as much as I could. And then of course my brain was just looking at this beautiful color. So when I got home, I panicked. Um, I started knitting. I did not cage swatch, but I started knitting. Um, and I just started watching some podcasts and got to thinking about how much this yarn being superwash marina was going to grow after knitting. And I don't want my sweater to come down to my knees <laughs> when I knit it because I've heard just horror story, horror stories of that happening. Um, so I panicked and I went back to the yarn store with all my yarn, even though I had skeined it up, I had already knit almost half of the back panel. Um, and I talked to the owner and I said, you know, I really think I made a mistake with this yarn. I don't want the yarn to stretch out so much. I want a different yarn. And she really, really encouraged me to stick with this yarn. Um, so much that I was, I was stressing about it. So I went home and I said, okay, I will stick with this yarn. This will be a good learning experience for me because who doesn't want to knit with yarn that feels like this, this soft? And lots of people do it and there are patterns that call for it, but this pattern doesn't call for it. And I think that's what was freaking me out is that I like to knit according, you know, as close to what the pattern calls for as possible. And I knew that this would end up being different. So anywho, after talking to my friend Akira from the Knitting Annihilator podcast, and then my friend Aaron, who lives local to me, um, they helped me to just calm down. They said they've knit plenty of sweaters with superwash merino yarn and that I would be okay. And I figured also that this will be a great learning experience for me. I will just have to be very diligent. 
of being careful with the length. I'm okay if it grows in width, which I don't think will happen, you know, very much, but if it grows in width, I'm okay with that because this is supposed to be a very oversized sweater. That's cool. But as far as the length goes, what I think I need to do is knit, um, I don't know, maybe half of the body and maybe a little more half of the body and maybe even some of the arms and then block the sweater while it's still on the needles. Of course, I'll have to switch the needles, but you know what I mean. Block the sweater while I'm still working on it so that I can see exactly how much it's going to grow. And then after I can see that, I will knit the rest of it um, to the appropriate length. So after I talked about that, <laughs> talked it over with my knitting friends, I felt a whole lot better and I decided that I was going to stick with this yarn. And I am just absolutely adoring it. Like, oh, it's so squishy. It's so soft. So we'll see, you know, if I'm able to get it the length that I, that I want it to be. Okay, so in my nature, I am still, I'm just an anxious person. I, I stress. It's what I do. So, um, and then I also like to learn. So I have decided that while I'm knitting this sweater with this yarn, I'm also going to knit a whole nother sweater. I know, I'm crazy. I'm crazy. And when I say a whole nother sweater, I don't mean a different sweater. I'm going to knit the same sweater. <laughs> because I want to put aside the anxiety for once in my life and not like mull this over in my head over and over and stress myself out, but see what will actually happen. Like be a scientist, I guess. So I'm going to knit this sweater with this Malabrigo Superwash Merino yarn. And then I'm also going to knit the same, cl not clove sweater, I'm getting my sweaters confused, Harlow sweater by Kadri in a woolly wool a woolly wool so i've been watching a whole lot of podcasts from i think her name is taylor and the name of her podcast is wool needles hands and she is the maker behind and i think she's a dyer to a yarn dyer for fiber fiber for the people yarn and i've just been learning so much from her I learn so much from people who do podcasts. I really do appreciate all the time and effort and energy that people put into making podcasts because I have just learned so much. So anyway, she has been raving about this yarn from Lion Brand, and it is called Lion Brand um, Fisherman's Wool. And the reason that I want to use this yarn is because it's very, very affordable. She does these um, series where her videos are all about going from budget to bougie, bougie yarn. So obviously my gray yarn from Malabrigo would be bougie. You know, it's, it's more expensive. But because I really want to see um, how this yarn will react or how the sweater will look in a more wooly rustic yarn I figured I would go with this because it's extremely extremely affordable so this yarn I ordered from Amazon because I can't get to the store like I want to I ordered it from Amazon and I got three balls of this for I think it was under forty dollars and that's you know that's enough to knit a sweater so for my second sweater I am going to knit it with this Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool because Taylor from that podcast says that it's just a very good yarn. So I said, well, let me just see for myself. So I ordered it. The only thing is the yarn that she used looked more like this one. And this is an acrylic that I had in my stash. And of course, there's a place for acrylic. But for this purpose, I want to use wool because that's what the pattern says. And I, you know, anyway, all that goodness. I thought it was going to look more like this with the little tweety bits in there. But it's more of like tweety stripes, as you can see. 
And, you know, I'm still going to do it. I think I'm still going to do it. Um, but it just looks a little different knit up. So I decided for this one, I would be a big girl and I would do my due diligence and swatch. So this is the swatch. It has been blocked. Yeah, y'all. I even blocked this one. I'm like, if I'm going to do this experiment, I need to do it right. So I blocked this so that I could see what my gauge would be. And so pre-blocking, it was very interesting. When I pre-blocked, or before blocking, <laughs> I'll say, my gauge was spot on. So the pattern or the gauge for the Harlow sweater is 19 stitches per inch. And I was getting right at 19, not 19 stitches per inch, 19 stitches per four inch. <laughs> And so I was getting gauge and that was like so surprising for me because I never get gauge. But I said, let me go ahead and block it because that is what good makers do. And so I blocked it and now I'm getting like 20 stitches per four inches. And that doesn't make sense because yarn typically grows, right? Even wool like 100% wool, it typically grows. Um, so if I get, and I, now I'm getting confused because you know gauge can be so confusing. So I was getting 19 stitches per four inches, but now with 20 stitches per four, per four inches, even though that's a larger number of stitches, that means that the sweater is going to be smaller because when you have more stitches within that given um, amount of length, it's going to be smaller. If the stitches were larger than that given amount of length, it would be bigger. So anyway, that was interesting to me because you would think that it would grow, but it seemed to shrink. All that to say, I am still going to use the suggested needle size for this, which is a size seven. And, um, I think I'll just go up a size in the sweater. So instead of knitting a size small, I'll knit a medium for this since my gauge is tighter. Um, and I think I've mentioned in other podcasts that I will gauge swatch, but then I don't do anything about it. So I'm trying to do all the things. And so since my gauge is going to be off, I'll choose a different size for this sweater. And hopefully I'll like it. I don't know. It's very, very busy very busy. It's like if I had a contrasting color, it might tone it down a little bit. I don't know. But anyway, this is my budget sweater that I'm going to knit. And the reason that I'm knitting it is because I want to use 100% wool that is non superwash just to see the difference. So this one, I feel like I'll be a little less stressed because this is what the designer actually called for, a non-superwash wool. Okay, sorry, I was low on storage and I had to do something about that. So the other sweater that I'm knitting in the Malabrigo yarn, I will have to be just more diligent about checking the length on this and blocking while I knit it so that I don't end up with a dress and I end up with a beautiful sweater instead. <laughs> so those are my current whips along with the headband that I mentioned or ear warmers that I mentioned earlier. All right, so that is all that I have for you today. I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed hearing me ramble. <laughs> Um, subscribe to the channel. It really helps me to grow. Um, like, comment, all those things so that I can continue putting out content for you. And like I said, I will see you in the next one. Happy knitting!